<clears throat> takes everybody like three minutes to get here. People would probably remember if I did reminders though, wouldn't they? Yes. Okay. And now my mug is leaking. It's way too early once again on a Wednesday morning and here I am doing a Facebook Live or on YouTube if you're watching it there because I got tech skills to send them out over the internet waves simultaneously. I don't know how to do it either. I just found this place that does it for me. Anyway, it was a rough night. It was a long night. All I did was go to a guild meeting. But it's the guild where not only am I on the membership committee, no, not the <laughs> wrong committee. I'm on the workshop committee, yes, and I was the only committee member there, so I was kind of in charge of that part. But I was also the special guest, and months ago, the program director had said, Andrea, can you come and show us during the month of April all the new and nifty notions that you'll have in the shop in April? I'm like, sure thing! No problem! Of course, last week I went, oh crap, what did I do? Anyway... So yeah, I have a, like a late guild meeting and then get up early and do um, the Wednesday morning live. No problem. Okay. Mm. But I do have some new stuff and a shout out to everybody watching who may be from the Fredericton Quilters Guild. Thank you for putting up with me. Yes, it has been my lifelong dream to A, own a quilt shop and B, become a personality on media. Yes, that's me and my TV voice. Thank you for watching. Oh gosh, I think the meds kicked in. Anyway, if you ever think I'm making some sort of weird voice or making a reference that you're not really getting of some sort, it's probably some video that I watched on Facebook and I'm just emulating that other person. That did strike me the other day and I was like, I should probably explain myself. Yep, my mom's nodding along going, yep, that's totally her. Anyway, in the interest of absolutely trying to look like a professional business person, <laughs> I know, you're laughing. Um, like it says down below. Whoops. There we go. The quilting shed. Can we do a do-over? No, I don't know. Can we do that? <sighs> Hi, I'm Andrea from the quilting shed, and thank you for tuning in. Before I um, show you what's due, because I'm going to spin my spin my device around here in a minute. I made a thing. But it's only part of a thing. So Emily, one of our resident pattern developers who writes her own patterns, is working on a new release. And I said, ooh, I got some jelly rolls. Can I make some? And she's like, here's a preview copy. I'm like, sweet. Yeah, we take. Um. So I was doing this, and it is the K-Facet um, jelly rolls that I are, uh, currently have on special that I told you about. And remember, I said they were flawed, but we still couldn't quite figure out what way they were flawed because it was explained to me. Maybe maybe there's not enough pieces in them, but everyone I looked at so far does have 40 strips in it. And somebody said, well, the fabric doesn't quite feel like up to snuff, and that's true. It's still very nice. It's not like dirt cheap cotton or anything. It's just not the highest quality uh gray goods that he normally uses. Um, but I did discover something else that is flawed in this jelly roll, which is not a huge deal. The strips are not two and a half inches wide, they're two and five eighths. And I found this out when I pieced all these lovely strips together and they did not wind up the width of the sashing. And then I went and measured from, from seam to seam and my seams are fairly accurate most of the time. And I didn't cut these, so usually it's a combo. If, I, if I'm out, it's a combo of cutting and piecing between the two of them. Um, so, yeah, the, these Cave Facet jelly rolls are just a wee bit wider than they should be, which is fine because people normally say jelly rolls are cut a little on the slim side. So, also, as the title says, thank you, Anne-Marie, for reminding me. Happy birthday, Ron. It's my husband's birthday today. OMG. I didn't forget it was his birthday, but up until yesterday, I thought it was Thursday. Like, I remembered the date. I just thought the 17th was tomorrow, not today. Oops. He's always asleep when I leave the house, so I'll catch him later. But speaking of Ron, woo, 
Yes. If you see this uh, really nice thing in the shop that had been in progress, this is an attic window class that Ron will be teaching on April 28th, which is a Sunday. I'm giving you a heads up now, but I'm not sending you the link quite yet to pay for it and register for the class because I already have a waiting list. I know. So I'm going to get the people on that list to sign up first. And if there's any room left over, which there should be for this specific class, then I will put that list out public and figure out what I'm going to put on there for a uh, waiting list in case we have to run this again or people cancel because it is going to be a slightly longer class. You would be making this absolutely specific window with this panel with these options exactly like this. And the price of the class is going to be $75 and it includes everything you need to make this. So you don't have to buy anything ahead. You show up to a class with your normal sewing stuff. You get the stuff for this. Ron walks you through it. You end the day mostly with this and we're all good. Um, and then later, if you want to put a border around it, whatever, but you learn the Ron technique for how to make your attic window line up perfectly with everything and not distort your animals too much. And in a future date, we will do another course on the attic window where I, I, yours truly, Andrea, will show you the slapdash method for a panel you that doesn't have a lot of extra detail and we'll just whack it up and throw some things on it and it will be a completely different teaching style than Ron. But if you want perfection, um, sign up for Ron's class because he's very methodical. And yes, you can do that after I send you the link. I know, which won't be today. It'll be, it'll be later. Be later. Uh, and if you are in the shop, we do have other examples of Ron's work, another attic window that's up on the wall and all done, and one of his other more modern designs. So, hey, happy birthday, hun. I'm pimping your work today. <sighs> With that being said, let's turn this, turn the beat around. Let's turn the beat around. Because the boss needs to sit down. All righty. Here's my other setup, sorry. I mean, I'm just in, I would be slightly more organized and maybe less spastic if I got more sleep, but that's why you tune in. I know, I'm just mixing it up. See, there's not a lot of room over there, so I turned around because there's more room here and I put my stuff all over here, so that's why we're doing that. And there's my mug, okay. Oh, this is the slidey side, oops. If, if I suddenly roll away, it's it's normal. Just ignore it. We all do. Mm. What's new? We have new things. We totally have new things. And, mm, sorry. Some of these new things I showed off to the guild last night. And there are some things that uh, we got back in stock. Sorry, just looking at another pile. There's piles of stuff everywhere here. Less piles than there was midway through the day yesterday. The Easy Press Pen Essentials Kit. This is not new, but it might be new you. But it's newly back in stock in the shop, and I've got lots of it because we love it. It is not just starch. It is not just fabric softener or whatever. It is magic. It is worth every penny. I'm just finishing up a bottle of this that I had opened up when I first got it in. So it does last you quite a bit. I still use this as well as Best Press. I just use them for different things. The Easy Press Fabric Treatment I use to get out stubborn creases, like that fold that's right along the fold of that comes off the bolt in your fabric. That'll disappear. Did a magic trick last night. Got the nice audience to go, ooh. Love it when they do that. Um, the other thing this is really, really good for, and I forgot to mention, this is a Canadian company. Yeah, I know. It's a Canadian company made in Canada. You don't hear that every day. I know. Pretty sure it's made in Canada. Can I double check? Yes, it absolutely says made in Canada. Don't get it in your eyes. Okay. Um, don't mix it up with your contact lens solution. Um, I was somewhere, but now my brain is off on allergies. Easy press fabric treatment. 
the stubborn creases and when you have a lot of intersections multiple points that come into one seam and it's got like that big bump you're like do i swirl the seam do i press it open it's uh and you whack whack it with the iron and do i get the wooden clapper you don't need to do any of that you just take this you put like a dab on it you wait five seconds you press it with your iron it's flat i will do a demo for you here in shop swing by i'll show you it just it's yeah love it it's one of those things you're like can't possibly be that good yeah, it is. We're all raving about it because it actually works. Every time you see a shop owner go, you really need to buy this. We're not just telling you because we want to sell it. We're telling you because it actually works. We've seen all the extras and the ins and outs. You can tell when we really like it. The other new thing I got, and I'm kind of excited about this. I don't know about you, but I am. I got in another OmniGrid ruler. I know, why is she excited about rulers? This one is five inches by 10 inches. So if you work with a lot of charm packs and layer cakes, the five inch and the 10 inch squares, this ruler is that measurement. Like, why would you, why would you not? Um, yeah, if, if you had a lot of scraps that you wanted to cut into those shapes and you didn't want to get a more expensive ruler, because this is only 25 bucks. Uh, it's a handy size if you didn't have a 6x12 or didn't want that size or want to do something different or you have a 6x12 and you're like, but I work a lot with layer cakes and the other size is just awkward and there's like extra bits hanging over and I want something that's just a little bit smaller. I got you. I got you. You know I got you. I got you because I love you. So yeah, while we were talking at Guild last night and we were doing show and tell, I was like, I totally have to tell this story tomorrow on video. Um, during show and tell, if you haven't been to a guild meeting after the regular businessy part is over, there's what they call show and tell. So most of the audience sits there and anybody who has finished a quilt gets in line and shows off their quilt and talks about it. It's very orderly. Um, except when we hassle each other. So anyway, my friend Candace gets up and she's like, I finished all these quilts because I have this UFO challenge going through the stop and she's gunning for that gift card. Um, so she finished a pile of things and she shows up this one and she goes, I finally finished this. I love this fabric that I put on the back. I bought it out of Andrea's shop like five years ago. And the lady next to me was like, five years ago, really? I'm like, yeah, five years ago, like two houses, like when I first started, if you remember when I was up on Keswick Ridge and the first quilt shop that I bought out, it was fabric from that haul that Candace had bought and she bought a lot of it because she really, really liked it. Just some Halloween fabric. Um, it was Patrick Luce. Uh, see, I have this, couldn't remember what day of the week this week my husband's birthday was, but this fabric that Candace bought five years ago, totally. Yeah, know where it came from, know what she paid for it, know the designer. Welcome to my brain. So yeah, five years ago and boom, here I am in our real quilt shop. This is amazing. And honestly, I joke that the quilt put, Quilt Guild puts up with me, but at every time they say things like we really have to support our local quilt shops, this is what it gets you. Good and bad. <laughs> Good and bad. While you have a quilt shop, yes. And it's got a lot of fantastic stuff in it with reasonably decent prices and a slightly crazy owner. So there's your trade-off. I know. we almost there. It's like 95% perfect. Just got to get you on a good day, I guess. <laughs> or as we all say, someday the rest of my life will calm down and then everything will be fine. <laughs> How long have I been saying that? More than five years. Um, the other new product, and I know you've all been saying this too, and you're laughing hilariously because if we don't laugh about it, we will be crying in a ball in, in, on the floor. So just laugh. Um, the other new product we've got was the Bohin Polka Dot Sticky Thimbles. Now, I normally have a different brand of stick-on thimbles. They aren't thimbles per se. They're just a little piece of whatever that sticks on your finger so you don't turn the end of your finger into hamburger while you are hand-stitching. So there's a little piece of silicone with adhesive on the back that sticks on the end of your finger. And they are $14, but it is very, very sticky. And you should be able to get replacement sticky adhesive stuff. I do have some for the other brand, so they would be a little bigger. And these are like textured on the ends, which are really, really kind of cool. I think I like the textured ones. Also, these are red, so they're easy to find. The other brand that I carry is not red. 
their silicon version is actually clear. And if you've ever bought a clear silicon anything, if it falls on the floor, it might as well be lost forever. Because our eyes are getting too old to find that. I can barely see the screen. I still have not gone to visit the eye doctor to get my prescription renewed. I need a wife. Um, so there's that. The other thing I showed them, again, this one is not new. But it is fun. And my friend Connie, who is in another sewing group, we started to joke that Connie does not work on commission. But Connie has sold a lot of these for my shop. These sewing machine cleaning brushes from Eleanor. Yeah, there's Eleanor Burns right there. Woohoo! Um, yeah, see how tiny they are? Yeah, that's so in around the, the bobbin case and, and under the needle plate and stuff. You can get in and really, really clean it, which you absolutely should be doing. As I told somebody last night, she made an entire flannel quilt and then she figured I should probably like clean under here. And she thought there was a piece of felt under there, but no, it was, the dust had packed in so bad it had felt it. Um, so yeah, if you do make a flannel quilt, definitely plan on cleaning your machine afterwards. You should be cleaning your machine on a regular basis in addition to sending it in for servicing on a regular basis. I am bad at this myself. So, you know, I got to take my own advice. Um, yeah, these are like seven bucks. So yeah, you can just poke around there. It's just, it'll be really satisfying, better than cleaning your ears. I promise. Um, I'm a weirdo. I'm just a creep. I'm a weirdo. I'm not going to break in the song, I promise. I got another brand of white marking pen. This is the Bohin one. It's $13. So this one will wash off or iron off. Squirt, squirt with your... Ooh. Oh, this one says this ink is iron erasable only. Ooh. And again, like the other brand I have, you draw the line. It looks like it didn't do anything other than make a wet line. And then psh, the white comes out. So that's fun. Because we've all tried to mark stuff on dark fabric. Personally, I normally like to use a uh, mechanical chalk pencil. But I lose mine a lot. Or sometimes I, I have an old one and I tend to pick that up instead of throwing it out because it's broken. I know we're not smart. It's not wartime, Andrew. You don't have to save it because it could be fixed. Uh, yeah, I do like my mechanical chalk pencil, though. But for some people, the mechanical extra fine lines mm, can be an issue until you get used to it. So onto the new fabric. This is from Moda. You thought the Jelly and Jam was really sweet last time that I showed you. This is the uh, Flower Girl. by Heather Briggs of my So Quilty Light Life. And I think these are 20 for the charm pack. Oh my God, it's so sweet. She's doing this quilt along, which I'm sorry, I do not have the pattern, but I do have some of the fabrics if you've seen them. there's These are 20, yes. And the fabric is, the fabric is 22 a meter. The Moda has kept going up. But I did get in uh, three of the coordinates. This lovely green print. I know. This lovely peachy print. Very sweet. And this buttery yellow print. This very, it, mm, that might be closer to accurate. Okay. So this is also really sweet. And of course, the jelly rolls where you can see all this. We are leaning heavy into jelly rolls. And like that sample block that I showed you earlier when Emily releases her pattern for jelly rolls, which is very, very easy, I'm going to heavily promote it. Yes, because it's very easy, very quick, and will help you use up those jelly rolls. Oh, also new. The students in the beginner class call this the robot iron. We have an Oliso iron in the classroom for class use. And it freaks everybody out the first time they use it because, you know, it moves the little feet and stuff and makes a noise and goes, eek. Showed it off last night, how you can just sit it down and it goes, eek. I know, it's so obedient. <gasps> but this is the very pretty tulip pink version for a few more dollars. This retails at $290. Yes, I know. 
but it is a very fantastic iron and it is only ten dollars more than the regular oliso iron look at this box look at this this is please don't feed the fish you're like please don't i don't get it why does it say please don't feed the fish i really love these irons i didn't think i would but uh the more i use it the more i'm like this is a really good iron and full disclaimer i don't i haven't been putting water in it so i don't really use i did once but um i took most of it out because I like to do my steam now with a squirt bottle of water instead. But look at this color. Hello, you know how much I love pink. Hi. Um, please don't feed the fish. Look, look. Ha <laughs> It's like the little fish are in your water tank. Um, and it's got the fairy dust pattern all along around here. The nice teals up here. This just makes me happy. I mean... If you're gonna buy a normal everyday thing that comes in fun colors buy the version that makes you happy jeez that is just the cutest most adorable thing i've ever seen and i'm gonna put it neatly back in the box in when we're done when we're done let's just move it out of the way let's just whoops falling off my chair because this is a professional video I hope you're all laughing. Um, if I'm gonna look ridiculous on camera, I, you may as well you know, have some fun with it. Speaking of irons, because we have the Oliso set up in the shop, I also dug out, I started ordering some wool uh, pressing mats. And one time I ordered like one of every size because I had ordered the small one. And those had sold out rather quickly, so I had to restock those. And I'm like, let's get the other sizes because a few people have asked, so you got them in bigger sizes? I'm like, mm, they're kind of pricey. But it turns out also worth every penny. So this is the 12 by 18, which is half the size of your cutting mat, which would probably suit most people, unless you're doing like the really long seams. But, and I'd forgotten this when I had ordered it the first time. So my delivery guy, Mike, he drops this off. He's like, I don't even know, man. It's light, but it's big. I'm like, what is in? I don't even know either, Mikey. He's like, it's bigger than me. It's bigger than the most of us. We could go surfing on it. It's definitely bigger than my head. Look at, look at this. This is. I'm that little cartoon. Woo. Woo. So this is a 24 by 36 wool pressing mat. And I think it's priced at 95 bucks. Like, I think so. Yeah, double check that. I do know it is not double the price of the one that's half the size. It's like really good. Yeah, it's like 95 bucks. The other one's 80, which is ridiculous. And honestly, for this one, if you did want it on your ironing board, it only overhangs about like an inch on both of the skinny sides. So it's only a couple inches wider than your ironing board. It's not quite as long. It's almost the full length, like before it goes like this on your ironing board. So you could cover your almost your entire ironing board with that. And let's circle this back to my husband. <laughs> Since he's been in the shop one day a week uh, working on his attic window sample, he's been using the fancy iron on the fancy pressing mat. And the first day that he picked up the Aliso iron and was using the pressing mat, he went, oh baby, in that deep rumbly voice he has. That's how we flirt these days. So yeah, it impressed the husband. I know it wasn't even a pie. Yeah, he really likes that iron loves it and hot because he plugged it in the first time he's like plugged it in he goes can you tip that iron so it turns so it turns on for me and it's hot when i get there I'm like you're gonna love it i just barely have to do it it'll be ready as soon as you want heats up real fast and he just could not believe how fast it heated up and it's very hot the aliso anyway and with the combination of the wool pressing mat it's absolute pressing perfection um the beginner quilting class. Sometimes they fight over it. Not terribly, but speaking of more jelly rolls, 
do you like black, white, and red? And I feel like telling you a whole bunch of black, white, and red jokes. <laughs> What's black and white and red all over? The newspaper. What's black and white and red and makes a terrible noise? Um, nuns in the blender. Um, <laughs> I'm terrible, I know, but this is fire and ice batiks from Moda even. And the jelly roll is $56. If you have to make a black and white quilt with little pops of red, this is fantastic. And batiks is really great. And they still pink the edges, but the batik fabric that, you know, the fabric that they printed on, it's still cotton, but it's a very tightly woven cotton. Uh, and through the batik process, it gets like a little bit of wax in it because that's part of the process. Uh, and they do try to get out as much as possible, but that sort of helps with that stiff feeling in the... Um, batik fabric itself but look at it it doesn't fray it's not snowy unpacked everything with the charm packs goes and like rubs everything off all the extra dots we've got a method for that because you know us we're just like that um these ones we didn't have to clean up the edges it's great uh what else have we got best press i have restocked the best press and there was one size of best press i didn't carry because honestly it gets overlooked at some of my suppliers but this supplier had it and i was like yeah let's get some of this size in it's a one liter jug if the gallon size jug is too much but the 16 ounce size half liter is you go through that too quickly consider this size also coming up is Earth Day and I feel compelled to let you know that we do refills. So if you have the um, 16 ounce size bottle, we do $10 refills. I have a gallon jug already open, little funnel, just refill your bottle. Just bring your empty bottle in, I will fill it up. Only charge you 10 bucks, you go home, you're happy, you got cheaper, best press. We're all happy. You have one less bottle to throw out, you just keep using it until it dies. And I have extra squirty things if the squirty thing is all clogged up on your end or you broke it or whatever i got extra because nobody wants to buy an extra one <laughs> or people come in and they buy they buy a bottle and they're like no i got a squirty thingy at home so squirt nozzle squirt thingy or they've switched to like the really fine mister bottle and they just use the regular best press bottle to lug it lug it home uh i swear to god i'm almost through my list here I'm just taking my good old time because, of course, I talked for a solid 20 minutes last night in addition to all my other things that I did at the meeting. Mm. I should apologize to all the older ladies there with hearing issues because I did not use the microphone. And also, I speak very quickly sometimes, especially when I'm tired and, I'm, and my watch had... Uh, I set a timer for myself so we could stay on track. So the last five minutes, my watch was actually vibrating on my wrist. And I was like, okay, hurry up. Getting through things as fast as possible. I know. New book in the shop. And I do have multiple copies because I think this is fantastic. If you're on the library committee for your guild and you don't already have this book in your library, even if you have an extensive, even if you're not in a guild and you have an extensive library, in your own home some of us do this book here the one block wonder panel quilts if you like the one block wonder quilts have you seen them done with panels if not just like go look one block wonder go over to google just type in one block wonder panel quilts you can even like stop listening to me because honestly you'll just be sucked into this for days this is amazing it goes through step by step. It is absolutely worth any penny, every penny of the 30 some odd bucks I got it priced at. And it shows you how to incorporate the panel. So you see the panel in full as well as the one block wonderishness of it. Like that's the one, that's the panel in the middle there. And this is like the one block wonder all around it. I mean, that's that's the original panel and here it is with the one block wonder and honestly that's a lot nicer it's amazing oh there's susan susan wait you see all the new stuff <laughs> yeah i'm like super super loving this i really want to do one of these one day even though most of the time um there's the one block wonder design tool online where 
you can kind of upload an image of your fabric. And honestly, if you go to my website and you're wondering, you're looking at a fabric, and you're like, will this make a good one block wonder? Right click on your laptop and then choose save as the image and then upload that image. You can swipe it off my website. I don't care. Um, or grab an image of the panel and upload that to the one block wonder tool and just use the defaults that they give you and click the button and say, show it to me, see what it looks like. And Stand back in amazement. We have done that in store for people who are wondering, will this fabric work? And I'm like, let me haul it up for you. I know. Then they go, sold. And that's what we want to hear. Whew. The other new things. I have like a handful right here. Just two things. I swear to God. Although I am still, I know you're looking at me. So what does she keep looking at off camera? Somebody said that to me once when, what were you, what did you keep looking at off camera? It was driving me nuts. Um, she's my friend and she loves me and I love her. And we can say those things to each other because we're close like that. Uh, and it was like something I kept thinking about mentioning. So yeah, I did get in uh, one inch wide elastic, waistband elastic. And this other waistband elastic, I haven't priced these yet. I'm sure if I look at this price list right in front of me, it'll tell me. Uh, Oh, $3 packages of elastic. Remember how I keep pimping that flannel? That flannel that's over there for pajama pants? Well, see, now I have the elastic, so you don't have to go, like, two places. I've got the elastic. I've got the flannel. You can make the pajama pants starting now for Christmas or just because you love your husband and he needs warm, cuddly pants to sleep in at night because he's cold all the time. The things we do. Uh, so there's that. Take care of that later. Where am I going to put them in the shop? I don't know. Where do you see what's coming next week? Oh my God. Yes, I have to move a few things again, but don't worry. It's fine. I don't know why my nose is driving me nuts today. So I did get some clearance patterns and no, the kid did not yell at me for getting patterns because obviously we are so low on patterns here, right? But these ones are on sale for $10 a piece. There are limited copies. So if the they interest you, I'd probably think about picking up one sooner rather than later because this one I sold actually before I got it into inventory. Um, yeah, hot stuff. This is the casserole carriers. If you go to potlucks and we're getting, you know, to the planning stages in uh, various groups that we're in, stop for the summer. So this is April, so May, June, they start having their potluck end of the year dinners, and you want to be able to carry it in style, right? Ten bucks. Also, maybe you're working in the kitchen and you need yet another apron pattern. I really like the Atkinson designs, and they were on sale at my supplier, so here we go. Adult apron in two styles with round and square hot pads. And guess what? Uh, they use jelly rolls. It's like I'm on a theme. If you don't have jelly rolls and you're like, I just buy a bunch of yardage, Andrea, cut your scraps into two and a half inch strips. There's no shame. You can do that and then be like, yeah, let's just use them up. You're like, but what if they don't match exactly? Throw them in there anyway. It's an apron. Who cares? You're going to get food all over it. <sighs> don't you love my convincing sales pitches? <laughs> this is why I don't work at the Home Shopping Network, okay? Um, I know I have an, another copy of these somewhere because I know I ordered three of them and somehow there's only two, but I think I sort of hid a copy on myself. So, cause I really want to make these pint size parking. It's this lovely, you don't have to put mason jars in it, but they will fit. And I can hear my mom now. Oh my God, we should make some, you should make some for me, Andrea. My birthday's coming up. She pretty much says it just like that. And you've met her. So you're like, oh my God, she sounded just like Diane. I know. I have a friend, Diane. And I have the mom, Diane customers, Diane. It's almost as bad as all the Susans. Pine size parking. Get organized. Pick a pair of pretty fabrics for picnics, parties, or any room in the house. Perfect for parking pint size jars filled with life's little necessities. Seven inches by seven inches by three inches. And of course, it uses the soft and stable foam or the headliner or the bosal foam. You know, the foam in insulation type, type stuff. I do like organizing stuff and making it look pretty. There it is on the back. It's like a $10 pattern. 
it's not as difficult to make as it looks because I was like, how do they put this together? And I looked at it and I was like, of course, that's how they did it. Honestly. Um, letter zip instead of letter, letter rip. Huh. Little zipper pouches with people's initials on them. This will also use up your stash. You could get started on presents, Mother's Day, birthdays. Um, they just use up fat quarters, probably less than that by the time you get down to it. Oftentimes what I do with uh, patterns like this when I'm going through my stash, and then, yeah, this one says fat quarters as well. Some people get really stuck on the yardage and they're like, I need a fat quarter. I need a fat quarter. I need a fat quarter. But what if I don't have a fat quarter? But what if I have a fat quarter and there's only like a corner cut out of it? Okay, read the second step. What size do you have to cut out of the fat quarter? Oh, I have to cut. Oh, I have to cut like a, a 10 by 12 inch square. I'm like, okay, so go through your scraps. Find a scrap that is maybe 11 by 13 and trim it even. It's not a fat quarter, but it's slightly bigger than the first piece you have to cut. You're good. This is my confession. <laughs> Hello, quilter friends. You know I'm going to start another sample. I know I showed you a block at the first of the video, and you're like, Andrea, do you do you not see that pile over there that you need to finish? I almost grabbed it to show you. Oh, now my neighbor's singing. <laughs> the construction guys. It's been they've been really loud lately. Not constructing, but when they pop in and stuff. I don't know if somebody moved something over there or what, but it's been amusing. Probably as amusing as it is when they pop in early in the morning and I have my headphones on and I am singing Barracuda. Who knows? It's a mutual thing. It's nice to make your neighbor smile. So yeah, back to me and the never ending pile of quilt minis that I have in progress because of course I am going to make some more. And I probably never would have thought of it until the kid said, you know, we have that bright Christmas line and those little tiny winter prints that would look really cute in these blocks. And I'm like, oh, I can't make a whole entire quilt. Some of these blocks are really big. And then last night I was like, oh, I will redraw them as mini blocks. Damn it. I hate when I do that. So this one is just hats and scarves. And look at how friggin' adorable that is. I have a lot of prints that would work really well with this. Eight fat quarters for the nap size. Eight, somewhere between eight and 19 different prints. This is so cute. They got a scarf out of a fat quarter. I'm impressed. Like I said, I love her designs. So that's a bunch of little hats, toques, beanies, whatever you want to call them. Stuff to keep your head warm. Hey, we could be knitting these. And also very similar, more hats, but also mitts and socks to go with the scarves. So I was thinking, I was thinking, and I'm about to sneeze, sorry in advance. This, <coughs> whew, sorry. I was thinking this would be uh, something that I would get many versions of. That's cute. That is just a little lap size anyway, so I wouldn't have to do much little socks and the mittens and the hats. I would rearrange it different. Of course, I need another mini, right? I need another mini for winter. I got to do it to promote the fabric, right? Please laugh with me. Please tell me I'm not pathetic. And finally, this is something Remember how I say all the time, if it's a collection, they only make a limited amount and when it's gone, it's gone. And sometimes the only times that you can get something extra, there's the postman, is if the supplier still has it and maybe they've put it on sale or whatever and it's kicking around. I did manage to get this panel that I had before that actually sold rather quickly and they still had some of the matching fabric left and in another print I didn't already have. You following me? It'll make more sense when I show you the panel of which I did not finish all the samples for. So I can dig out those samples, finish those, have them in the shop, or at least, you know, progress them a little more, stick them up in the design wall, whatever, you know. Uh, and you can see what you can do. Because I challenged myself to make as many items as possible out of this panel right here. Look at it. Dun, dun, dun. 
and it's upside down. Let's look at it right side up. Holy lifting. It's huge. Look at it. It's got 16 blocks. It's from, I always want to say it's Gingy Bear, but it's Gingy Burr. Gingy Burr. It is Moda. This line is a words to live by, and it has these nice uh, motivational things on them. A happy heart makes a happy home. Um, give more than you get, but don't light yourself on fire to keep somebody else warm. That's the other one. Um, buy flowers might be on my list today. Uh, everyone belongs. Dream, do, repeat. I've got a really cute quilt, cute lap quilt with these. So yeah, more panels of these are new and we still have a lot of matching yardage and a new pink print that goes with this because I have a black print, a mustard print, and a white print with a little bit of blue, which are showing on the website. So you can go see them. Just look up words to live by and it will be there. Don't think the pink one is showing yet. I can't remember if my little web fairies did that part or not. <sighs> it's been a lot of work because we've been restocking in the background and adding a bit more shelving and buying more hooks. Isn't that exciting? Hey, we didn't get anything new this week, but we did get a hundred more new six inch black grid wall hooks. Yeah, I'm really got to do that uh, behind the scenes stuff for running a quilt shop. But if you've been in here and you see random things laying around, you know I'm always working on something. The exciting news as well is, uh, right, the some of the Fireside got restocked, some of our more popular colors. So that's been restocked. Um, the batting in the bags, the 80-20, that's, those have been restocked if you need batting. So we do have lots to choose from there. What is on the way is Tulip Hanks Roar is on a FedEx truck right now. So I could post the link. We could all obsessively track it. Um, and remember I said a way back, you know, I've hit the big time when I have the big section of an Orophil thread rack on the way. I know, I'm excited. And we are going to be restocking a lot of uh, the smaller spools, because I know in the finer colors, you don't want the big, large spool of, you don't need the 1300 meters of this weird orange that you only need for this one project. So we are getting the smaller spools. We will keep the larger spools in the neutrals. And that will be the next section of the thread rack that we're getting, because we're still stocked up with enough of those to do us until then. So I'm really excited. So Tulip Pink's Roar is on the way. Uh, the Orphil Thread Racks are on the way. Uh, my assistant, my assistant hassled Northcott for me to say, where the heck is this order that I put in two weeks ago for basics that you're supposed to have in the factory in stock all the time? And they're like, oh, yeah, we're finally putting that order together. So I'm annoyed, but it's on the way. And two new lines that just that came out last month that I don't think half of Canada got yet. They are due to be in the warehouse next week. So I should be getting those shortly. One of them has turtles. You'll be excited. So if you've seen Northcott post about uh, the turtle, I don't know if it's Turtle Bay, but it's turtles and it's watercolory. They're getting it next week. Hopefully. I will get it soon after, but it's it was delayed for unknown reasons. I don't know any more than you do at this point. But finally, we're getting it, and any of the other quilt shops around that had ordered it will eventually be getting it as well. And hopefully, we'll all be happy. And look, spring is coming. Spring is coming. The sun is shining. The tank is clean. That is one of our obscure movie references. If you've ever watched Finding Nemo, the tank is clean. My husband likes to say that a lot. I will explain it to you later. It's fine. Um, yeah, Carlinda's saying she loves the fusible something, something. My logo's in the way. I'll read it later. I love it too. Um, thank you for joining me and watching me ramble and do God knows what.
I know. I don't know either. I'm set for a really, really busy month. I know you've all been asking about when uh, regular classes are starting up again. Realistically, they will probably be happening in June. I will tell you ahead of time, I'm just busy between now and then with other things. And I have scheduled in some resting in there as well because I have two shows to do and a trip to Dartmouth to make in there between now and then and finish up my current beginner class, which remember I said I scheduled for six weeks, but it's actually an eight week program. So oops. Um, so they're getting eight weeks, but we are squeezing in a class with Ron. And like I said, anybody who had said, sign me up for that before, you know, he had one strip of that section and the two people were like, I want to take the class. Don't care how much it costs. I'm taking it. I'll make it work. Um, Cause it'll be on a Sunday, but yeah, I will let you know when the class is open for everybody else to sign up and get the people that I promised they could sign up first after I like look at my notes. So yeah, they are coming as soon as Andrea gets a good night's sleep. I know it's partly the weather. It really is. It's the weather. It's allergy season. It's hot flash season. Anybody else with the hot flashes right now and the fluctuating is like, mm. I didn't even feel like wearing a jacket this morning, but I only wore it because my car keys are in it. My car won't start if I don't have my keys on me somewhere. So yeah, that's it. I will um, try really hard not to make a new sample today. And if I do sit at the sewing machine, shoot, I just noticed. Um, I just looked over at the sewing machine that I've been using, the FAF Quilt Expression 620. 720, sorry, 620, which is my absolute favorite and was on sale last month. Um, I just put the bunting panel from the Ocean Pearl line over on my sewing machine to remind me to make up the sample because people like the panel and they're like, some people are like, well, I don't get it. Well, how big it is. So obviously somebody has to sew the sample together. Maybe Susan will take pity on me. Um, hi, Susan. Love you. Um, yeah. Oh my good Lord. Is that 10 to 10? Jeez. Somebody should have told me to stop talking. Anyway, Carlin, how much is the Ron's something, something Ron's workshop? Ron's workshop, Carlinda will be $75, but it'll include everything you need for, to make what he's got on the design wall. And of course it's like a four hour class. It's longer. It's going to be on a Sunday. So, uh, cause that fits his schedule better. And we need to move some stuff in the shop so we can have like six people in the class and you all have room to do what you need to do. So I'm going to stop talking before people start breaking down the door and I really need to clean up because it's a hot mess behind here and uh, I will see you later. Okay. Thank you for tuning in and putting up with me. I know. And if you're watching this and you haven't been in the shop yet, I promise I am not, not this neurotic in person normally. <laughs> Who are we kidding? I am, but I like to hide it when I first meet you. Um, okay. I'll chat at you later. Bye. Thank you. Appreciate you. Goodbye. Goodbye. Goodbye.